In the last screencast, I introduced to you the different tenses of verbs that we're really focusing on. Um, so in this screencast, we're going to actually practice them. So we can break our verb tenses into three different groups. We've got progressive tense, perfect tense, and simple tense. And I probably should have started with simple tense. When we look at simple tense, we want to think of something that's easy. And the easiest thing that we can have in grammar uh, is one word. So when we look at our simple tenses, typically they're going to be one word. The only exception to that is our future tense, but future tense always has a helping verb, and the helping verb will always be the same. It's will. So other than that helping verb, we're going to look for one word, and that's going to be a simple tense. Perfect tenses have a helping verb, and that helping verb is a form of has. So has, have had, and we have a helping verb that goes with them, or I'm sorry, a suffix ending that goes with the regular forms of the verb, and that is ed. Now, we can't always rely on that because we have a lot of irregular verbs, which makes the English language so much fun to learn. Um, and so this is just a good rule of thumb, but it doesn't always happen. But you will always see the helping verb has, have, had in front. Progressive tense. We look for the form of be verb, so we're looking for am, is, are, was, were, be. And we also look for a suffix ending, and the suffix ending for progressive is always going to be ing. And I apologize, but my allergies are horrible, so you're going to hear me sounding a little funny here. All right, so what we did in class is we started by, you know, going through our typical process of trying to figure out what we can get rid of. And so in the first sentence, Mrs. Culleton will be running for Queen of Grammar 2013. So we get rid of our prepositional phrases for Queen. Actually, it's for Queen of Grammar, that whole phrase. And what we're left with is Mrs. Culleton will be running. So Mrs. Culleton is a subject, and our verb phrase is will be running. And whenever we talk about our verb from now on, I'm not going to always say it's a verb phrase. The verb is the main verb and any helping verbs that are attached with it. So once we have found um, our verb phrase, now we look at some of our hints up here. So I can see that I have a suffix ending, and that is ing. I also see two helping verbs, will and be. So I know that will always indicates future. Ah, future tense. So now I've got to figure out which future tense is it. So looking at my little cheat sheet up here, I know that if I have a suffix ing and I have a form of be, that it's got to be future progressive. We also use this as a good time to review our uh, varied sentence types. And so this varied sentence type had a prepositional phrase, but the phrase was at the end. And so this is just a simple sentence. The next sentence, she has been runner-up for the last three years. Getting rid of any prepositional phrases I have for the last three years. So I'm left with she has been runner-up. She is our subject. Now I have to find my verb has been runner-up. Looks like it could be the verb, and so I want to think, can you runner-up? That doesn't make sense because that's not an action. So the verb phrase has to be has been. I look at my main verb without the helping verb to decide if it's action or linking, and in this case, been is a linking verb. And so I know that what follows a linking verb could be a PA or a PN, runner-up. I could say the runner-up, so that's a noun. So I have a predicate noun. Now when I go back to my verb phrase, um, I'm looking for my hints. And so one hint is I see the helping verb has. And if I look up here at my little cheat sheet here, I know that any form of has has to deal with perfect tense. And I have to decide is it present perfect, past perfect, or future perfect. So this is where my helping verb comes in handy as well. Has. Um, indicates like right now, has something, has, oops, so has been um, is going to be present, 
perfect tense. So now I'm going to kind of get rid of my cheat sheet and try to do this a little bit from memory. And this is what you're really going to have to be able to do for the test. So she will compete fiercely by diagramming sentences. So I've got a prepositional phrase by diagramming sentences. My subject is she. What will she do? She will compete. I know this isn't a verb because it's got that suffix ending ly and that has to be an adverb. So I've got the verb compete which is an action verb. So now I've got to decide on my tense. So looking at my hints, I see that I have a helping verb, will. Now will is not like these other ones with a form of be or has. Will is that special verb that always indicates future tense. And when I get rid of that verb, I see that I'm left with one other verb. There's no other helping verb. There's no suffix. So this must be simple tense, future simple. Uh, and I forgot to go back and do these sentences, but neither of them have any introductory phrase or clause. There's no special punctuation in them. So both of these sentences are simple. Every night, she challenges her children to contests. So I get rid of my phrases, two contests. Um, I see a comma here that indicates that I have some type of introduction here. Every is not a preposition. It's not an amoebus. It answers the question, when. When does she challenge her children? Every night. So I've got an introductory adverb here. And that's going to be my type of sentence, intro adverb. So now I want to go back and see if I can find the parts of my sentence. She is the subject. She does what? She challenges. Challenges is an action verb. And I know that after an action verb, I have a direct object. She challenges whom or what? She challenges her children. So now looking at my verb, I want to decide the verb tense. Um, there are no helping verbs, so that's pretty easy. It's a simple way of looking at it, so it's got to be simple. And challenge, challenges, can't be past tense because challenged would be past tense, and it doesn't have the helping verb will, so it's just simple present tense. To prepare, she bought 43 grammar books on eBay. Well, I know that I've got an infinitive here, to prepare. Prepare is a verb with to in front of it. That's an infinitive. On eBay is a prepositional phrase. And I just figured out that I have an intro infinitive. So now I can go back and find the parts of my sentence. She is a subject. What did she do? She bought. There's my action verb. She bought what? She bought books. Books is my DO. So now I've got to figure out my verb tense. Well, I have one verb. It doesn't get any easier than that. Easy is simple, so that must be a simple tense. Bought indicates that it happened in the past because present tense would be by, so it's simple past. She will have diagrammed over a million sentences in her lifetime. So if I get rid of in her lifetime, is a prepositional phrase. Over looks like a preposition, but you can't over sentences. So this sounds like it's probably being used more as an adverb. Some of our prepositions, when they're not with a noun at the end of the phrase, they're just adverbs all by themselves. All right, so my subject is she. What's she doing? She will have diagrammed. Diagram is an action. That's something I can do, so that's a verb. So now I look to my clues. Well, I see a helping verb, will. Will always indicates future tense. And I'm going to look, do I have any other helping verbs or suffixes? Well, I have the helping verb have, and I have the suffix ed. And I know from studying that have and ed indicate perfect tense. So I have future perfect tense. And this doesn't have an introductory phrase or clause, so it's just a simple verb. On Friday, Mrs. Dean was thinking about competing against her. So 
so getting rid of any of my phrases against her about competing on Friday and I can tell that I have an intro prep phrase because I've got one right at the beginning. Okay, so now I gotta find my subject that is Mrs. Deem. What was Mrs. Deem doing? Mrs. Deem was thinking. So I have a verb phrase there. Now I want to think of my clues. When I see a suffix ending, ing, and I have a helping verb, was, which is a form of be. So I know that this is going to be progressive because of that. Now I have to decide, is it present progressive, past, or future? Well, was, something that was, is past. So this is a past progressive verb. And so this is kind of the process that we've gone through. You're not going to memorize every single verb that exists in the English language, so you're going to have to memorize the helping verbs and the suffixes and know what they indicate. Um, so this is pretty much what your test is going to look like on Thursday. Um, you're practicing identifying the verb phrase and looking at the helping verbs and the suffixes to help you recognize the tense.